Generally at the top of websites, sometimes you see these like little notification bars, uh, also known as the hello bar from way back in the day. Uh, that was like a, a thing where you just put a little notification. And so uh, I'm going to go in here and show how that gets built. And again, we'll, these are meant to be in you know the site editor, like the template parts in the header. Uh, I build them out here just so that I can sort of see what I'm doing. And it's because it's very easy to copy and paste. So I will break this list down. So each one of these is within a group because we want to be able to do some things with the group. Uh, and so inside of the group is a row. I'll explain why we use a row also. And inside that row is the paragraph. You can see it highlighted and then the button below it. So uh, we will start with our group. We're going to select the group. You can see by default, the group is the content width. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. Inside of that, we have a row block. And we have a paragraph sample. Well, I'll fill it in when we're done. And then also inside of that row block is a button. So I'll just type that in, get started. Uh, all right, so I'm going to update this. So as you can see, this looks significantly different than what we see here. We're going to fix that. Um, so I'm going to go to the group. As you can see, there is a setting option here for the width of the group. I want to make it full width because I, I, this surrounds the whole thing. Uh, this is that black section. And so because of that, I'm going to change that group to black. And then uh, I want the text, to, oops, I want the text to be white. And if I had any links in there, not I'm using a button, but if I had links instead, I'd also want them to be white. Or you could change them to something different if you want. Uh, and so uh, again, we still have a lot of places to go. All right, so I'm going to change the text here. And so as we can see, the row, which wraps the paragraph and the button, still is only, it, it by default, it inherits the, the content width, which is, I think, 640. Uh, we want this to just say, let's just go 1,200 just in case. Like, in other words, um, we want to at most. And I'm going to update this just so we can see what we're looking at. Uh, and so this is what we've got. So everything is like left aligned. This is the, the, uh, that 1280 I was talking about. You can see there, like it's or 1200 in Frost, excuse me. And so we want to do a few things here. We want to center everything. We want to reduce the size of the font in the paragraph. We want to um, reduce the size of the padding in the button and add some padding to itself. Uh, I'm going to actually... Just add a space to help we can see what we're up to. Okay, so we're inside of the group. We want to add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom of it. Um, so we'll maybe just do something like this. Uh, this down here is using uh, the predefined font size of 16, which is the extra small. So we'll just, uh, I'm in the paragraph now. I'm going to go down to extra small. And again, you can see everything's still sort of the alignment's wink. So uh, before we get to that, I'm going to go to the button uh, and you can see padding. We've got five pixels, top padding, and then down here, uh, we've got the small. So uh, if I go to the button and I go to the settings, I'm down here in padding, I can break these open. Uh, and because the first step in vertical is still too big, that's why I pop this open. That first step is 10. Uh, and so I want to just change that down to five. And then uh, I think down here we had extra small. And I think the font size I also changed inside of the button. Uh, I changed it to 14 just because we really want to keep it small. Uh, and so if you go to the font size inside of the button, we could do that. I'm going to hit update and we can just see where we're at. Okay. Again, you can see this row is still in alignment left. We're almost there. Um, and it looks like the padding top and bottom of the group itself is off, so I use 15 and 30. Uh, so let's address that first. I am inside the group. Uh, I want to change the top padding to 15, the bottom padding to 15. Um, and just because of, see how this goes up against the side here? Uh, in mobile view, we want to make sure that there's a little bit of padding on the side so that uh, it never goes up against the side of the screen. So I usually just use 30, which is the the traditional block gap um, 
inside of Frost. And so now I want to select the whole row. And what I want to do is um, you can see here, it, the, the row says, hey, justify the items inside of the row left. We want to center them, which we're almost there. Uh, and we can see here, there's a little bit of space here, but there's more space here. And that's because inside of this row is block gap, which puts that 30 pixels that comes by default there. Uh, and since I have the row selected, I will go to the settings here. See where it says block spacing? That's the same thing as block gap. Um, I'm going to change that maybe to 10. And that's what reduces that. So this obviously is an example of like what that spacing does. So if we go to 10 and I hit update, and then I refresh the notification bar, now we've got what we're looking for. And of course, to get this version of it, uh, you would just remove the background color. You could add top and bottom border uh, as this one does. And this is a little bar for notifications. Any questions on this one? Yes, there are a few questions. Um, well, one observation actually, mm -hmm. and I, I just noticed this too. I don't know why we both noticed this at the same time, but maybe it's because you're using it, is the breadcrumb feature on the bottom for going between down here. The different, yeah. I don't think that I've ever noticed that that's a thing. So just another another cool way to navigate blocks. Yes. Um, and you use, do you use that often, Brian? Uh, I actually use that more than I do. This is more jarring to kind of do some things. Huh. So like if I'm somewhere here, it's just easier to say, okay, um, th this is the whole group or, you know, I'm inside this. I just want to select the row. Um, that breadcrumb thing is extremely useful and I use it all the time. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I just love, this is the value of seeing people build mm -hmm. and seeing the way that they do it is just learning all these, these different little tricks. Yes. Um, there is another question. Is it possible to change alignment of elements in a row after stacking on mobile? Um, and then the like follow-up to that is on the desktop, they're left and right, for example, and on mobile, they're centered. Is there a way to solve that? Or is that something that is requ requires CSS right now? Okay, so I think I understand the. Let's start with the this question first. So, um, so we've got this content centered uh, inside of the justification. We're inside of the row block down here. You can see which one's sort of selected uh, up here in layout. Um, this is where we started. If you wanted to align everything right, we could. This what it does is it centers everything, puts it together, and centers it. But I believe the question you're asking is this magic button, which basically takes the items in the row and adds space between and pushes it out to the um, the extent of the container. And because the row right here, um, we've selected wide width as the the row container is 1,200 pixels wide. It pushes things out left and right. And I'll go to the front end so we can see what this looks like, um, like that. And so, yeah. and this is useful. Like if you did something different than a notification bar, like above your header, if you wanted to like add, I don't know, some, some text here and then like social media icons here, this is a good way to get everything in alignment. And what I'll also do, um, and why rows are sometimes better than columns is, and I'm going to reduce this so we can see how this breaks down in mobile. Okay, and I'll explain this. So right now you see things jamming up against one another. And that is because there's an option in the row right here, allow to wrap to multiple lines, which I didn't select. Uh, so if we update that and I come back, what it does is, oops. Now it allows it to wrap multiple lines, which then does what I think we're looking for. So if you use the column, I think what happens is this button goes all the way off to the right. The alignment's kind of weird and off. And so uh, in this case, the row block was, works really, really well. Now, if the question is, can you take items that are sort of set apart, unlike this one down here on mobile and make them centered? The only way to do that is to go through the alignment method, which is just kind of keeping them together in the center here. Uh, utility classes could very easily be added to each of these two elements. Like if you, I think has text, has dash, text dash align center uh, is a, a class built in. So you could, and um, let's just see if this, this uh, no, no, that will only work on mobile. So you could use custom CSS to do those things. Um, like write your own media query and then say has text align center 
you know, inside of this paragraph, uh, under advanced, you could type in like has text align center, and then go into custom CSS and inside of like a media query, uh, define that. Um, and that I think would solve the problem if that's how you wanted to go about it. Any questions on else? I don't see anything else. The question I thought was going to be asked, and I've yet to find the answer. Um, I'm sure it's just custom code. Is is there a way most of these header notification bars have like on the right side, like a little X, like close it out kind of thing tied together with cookies and whatever? Um, they're out of the box. That's not a possible way to do things. Uh, I'm sure very easily with some custom code that can be done would require a little bit of a build, but um, because a lot of notification bars, people want them dismissible. Um, the conversion folks don't, right? Because you always want it there. Uh, so uh, I have not, there's no WordPress core feature that allows for an X to close out that notification bar. Okay. 